So here we are on the day after 1010, and it was an incredible event to be present at, but there's a lot of questions about what the heck is happening. As of right now, Tesla is actually down 8%, huge drop in the market, and a lot of people are wondering what the heck happened. Well, I think there's a lot to this story, and I want to dive into it because Although yes, there are some downfalls to discuss and why the stock is down so much right now, but I think there's a lot that's being missed. I wanna cover that right now. There's no denying that the market, individuals, everybody who was waiting for this event expected more. They expected more in the form of details. We did not get a lot of details. Although yes, we did find out a little bit about how RoboTaxi is going to function. We actually got to see it in action, which is amazing. Really cool, really great stuff. We didn't get anything about price. We didn't get anything about what's the battery look like. When exactly is it gonna deliver? There was a lot of open timelines, things like hopefully before 2027. And yes, Elon is notoriously optimistic on timelines. So he did mention that's why they're not too specific on timelines, however, the only thing we really know is it's going to be under $30,000 and sometime before 2027. It's going to have two seats and uh, it's going to have no steering wheel. So no steering wheel was mostly guessed, but that's about it. We didn't really learn anything about RoboTaxi. Additionally, we did see Optimus in action, which was really cool. We got to see him dancing. We got to see him mixing drinks. Now, seeing this in person, it was more of somebody was controlling Optimus remotely, but don't let that fool you on what's really happening. We'll get back to that in just a moment. The premise is this, we didn't learn much and the market clearly wanted to see specific details on how this is all gonna work, how this is all gonna generate revenue, not just for Tesla, but for individuals. I think we're probably farther along right now with existing products from Tesla than what we learned last night. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For starters, we have the Model 3 now, and even with the removal of the most affordable Model 3, at least from starting price before tax credits, even then, we are at $35,000 after the $7,500 tax credit. It comes with four seats and it can be driven manually. So what's the value in a robo taxi if it's around $30,000? And that's a very fair question. And this is where we have to kind of fill in the blanks and figure out exactly what's the value of $30,000 vehicle that has two less seats, three less seats, really. No steering wheel, no pedals, can only drive autonomously. And I think that's where Hardware 5 comes into play. So it's pretty obvious that the delay has nothing to do with Tesla's ability to build these cars. It's Hardware 5 that is the delay. So they're still working on that. And even at Investor Day, we learned more about timeline for Hardware 5. So we have Hardware 4 vehicles right now. Elon Musk did reiterate new vehicles that they're making today will be able to operate on the RoboTaxi fleet. So if you bought a $35,000 Model 3, presumably that's gonna be able to work on the fleet, which is great. So why would you pay five grand more for this other vehicle? Well, it does have inductive charging. We don't know how big the battery is. We don't know how long it takes to charge. It does not actually plug in at all. It only charges wirelessly, which is really cool, but there's a lot of limitations to this thing. Now, I think that there's a clear business case to be had on having a fleet of these things but for the average consumer, you're probably scratching your head. Next up is talking about Optimus. And this is where I think a lot is being missed. This is the shining beacon of last night, Optimus. So we saw Optimus obviously remotely being operated, remotely being talked through, but it was actually operating on its own through those controls. Every time we've seen Optimus so far, it has been a leap step forward in his capability. He came walking out, they're dancing. Even with the interactions that are being remote controlled, remote discussions going through them, the operation is smooth and it is way faster than the last time we saw it. That has been the case every time we have seen Optimus today, which is really good. And I think that this is something that's being missed pretty big. Now, most people wanted to know more about how Optimus is gonna be sold, when it's gonna be sold, how it's gonna be used how we're gonna be able to set these up in factories, how it's gonna be able to do work. And we really just saw some demos of some videos of it sitting with families and things like that. But 
Optimus is a big deal. And the rate of progress on Optimus is actually pretty incredible. And I think that that's something that's unfortunately getting missed in all of this. Now, as further proof that Tesla is much farther along in this with existing products like the Model 3, last night they had 20 robo taxis and they had 30 Model Ys. So those Model Ys don't have any special equipment that isn't in cars that are being sold today. Those are operating autonomously with no driver, of course, in a controlled situation, a controlled course, so to speak, but they ran really well. And if you had a chance to ride in Robotaxi or the Model Y last night, you got to see for yourself how this is gonna work. It worked really well. Basically select this preset destination and it takes you where you're headed to. The screen allows you to watch videos, whatever. There's a preview of what this is gonna be like to travel in a city and i think that is where we're obviously headed the great news i think again that's being missed is existing cars seem like they're going to be able to operate just like this but the benefit is after it's done working and it heads back to your garage at home you're going to be able to take this car and do whatever you want with it so you'll be able to decide so again we have these very expensive vehicles that we're using for a very small period of their life. Right now, I'm in LA, in Florida, my car could be making money right now because I'm not using it. That is kind of the big picture here. And I think being able to say that cars that are being built today, will be able to do that as a bold statement. And we'll just have to wait and see if that actually turns out to be the case. So as we close out 1010, it's very obvious we didn't get the outcome that we're normally used to. As a clear example, I borrowed somebody's phone. I was logged into my Tesla account to pre-order whatever we're gonna be able to pre-order last night. I was expecting both a cyber cab and having one with a steering wheel that you can operate yourself. Obviously that didn't happen. So we did get some cool demonstrations. The market's not happy because they didn't learn anything new, which is understandable. Keep your eye on the big picture. Keep your eye on the long game here because the things that we did see, if you look at the details, Optimus is progressing at an incredible rate. Autonomous driving from Tesla is going to absolutely wipe the floor on Waymo. Uber is on its way out, although today in the market, you would think otherwise, this is going to replace everything we know. We really got a front row seat at looking at what the future looks like last night and i think that is the real story of what happened last night so let me know in the comments am i crazy am i out of my mind i don't know maybe i am let me know in the comments what your thoughts are i was very pleased to be able to experience it but i totally understand where the angst is and why the market is down today because wall street quite honestly is way too short-sighted on tesla with that hope that you enjoyed this video can't wait to catch you on the next one as i head to my flight back to florida